Hello and welcome to the Telstra Customer Insights Theatre where we will review the Matildas match against Germany and look ahead to their clash against the Netherlands in the early hours of Wednesday morning. I'm Stephanie Branson. I'm delighted to be joined by young and future Matildas head coach Leah Blaney and Leah's going to help me break down all the action from the other night and look ahead to what the Westfield Matildas have in store this week. Before we do that though, let's remind ourselves of how it all unfolded in the early hours of Sunday morning as the Westfield Matildas took on world number two side, Germany. The return to international football of Australia's Matildas. After nearly 400 days in the international wilderness, they are back in action. Oh, what about the turn here from Fowler? Here's a test in the middle. And then Germany strike. So this will be a great opportunity for Australia to see where Beatty Goad is at. Across comes Goad, and another clearance gets the blocking. But now on the counter attack, Sam Kerr is away and onside. Released by Van Egmond. Brilliant goalkeeping. And Van Egmond slides it through. The pass slightly behind Kerr. And Germany's defence able to deal with it. They regroup so quickly. It's the overlapping run. Good looking ball teased into the area and at the back post. It's Catherine Hendrick. Jewel Brand again looking for a teammate this time on the stretch. Is it four? And they got in a muddle there. Consolation coming up for Australia. Emily Gilnick, the reigning Golden Boot winner in the W League. Checker delivers first time. Good looking shape on it too. And Gilnick has two. As the focal point of Australia's attack, she carries on her form from the W League. Yeah, 5-2 result, not quite what we were after, but Leah Blaney, it really was more of a, a learning experience, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely, Steph. Uh, so in the lead-up to the Olympics and the World Cup, these games are very important for our Matildas group to experience and go through these challenging sort of games. At the end of the day, Tony has come out and said uh, the goal for us to, is to win a World Cup and to be the best in the world. And in order to do that, you simply need to play against the best in the lead-up. Yeah, so is that better that he gets a, a, a difficult match and perhaps what might be perceived as a, a poorer result or whether to get a whitewash over a team that's very easy? He really wanted a challenge, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we always want the results to go our way, of course. We're, we're a competitive <laughs> team and we're competitive by nature. But uh, along that journey, you need to come up against stronger opponents at, at different times in your preparation. And this was just an excellent opportunity for him to try different combinations, uh, to see the squad as a whole and, of course, blood in a few players who have actually not played in our senior national team before. Yeah, who excited you? Because we did see uh, a number of players make their debuts and also the youngsters that we don't get to see in action that often. Yeah, look, Mary Fiala certainly is an exciting player. She came onto the Young Matilda scene uh, approximately 18 months ago and her, her raw talent combined um, with her athleticism is something that was on show in the game. Her, her technical ability and ability to run with the ball and dribble as we saw moments throughout the match really highlights the quality of young players we have around the country and overseas. Well, it was quite interesting because, of course, Tony Gustafsson had his first camp gathering, you know, a few days out from that match. He didn't have quite what he would have probably perceived as a starting 11 uh, due to, say, Ellie Carpenter being kept back at Olympic Lyonnais and Amy Harrison in the Netherlands due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, what did you make of how he deployed them. There were, there were a couple of players, uh, Hayley Razo in particular, in, in unfamiliar positions. Yeah, look, there were certainly several key omissions from this squad, but as I've mentioned, the importance of building depth and the capacity to do that against you know, a top two ranked in team in the world is is fantastic. In terms of Hayley Rasso, uh, the ability for her to slot into a, a different position, something that she hasn't got a lot of experience in or, or played most recently in that role, just shows the flexibility she has as a player, um, being able to do that. Yeah, and it's a, a huge boost for Tony Gustafsson to have that flexibility in his team. Let's hear what he had to say post-batch. It's a good learning experience in the sense of some of the things you might get away with in other areas or at other levels you don't get away with when you're at the world level like the top top level because everything is so fast so it's creating these good habits that you know you get little time on the ball and all these things so that's one of the number one reason i said from the first day we need as tough schedule as possible to get this exposure to get this learning to see where we're at at the individual level and at the team level 
Was this an extreme challenge this time? Of course it was with all the circumstances, but we're not going to shy away from that. We're still going to go into these type of games with the mindset of getting one day better and learn and have takeaways from this. And there's going to be a lot of learning moments from this game. So Tony Gustafsson, pretty pragmatic about that result, as you would expect. And, and Leah, you mentioned it's world number two side, Germany. They're playing quite a bit of football. They've had uh, UEFA Euros qualifiers and, and things like that. Does that put them in... in a seriously superior position experience-wise to Australia? Yeah, absolutely. So everything that's happening in Europe at the moment in terms of uh, the capacity to play international level games mm. as well as the fact that uh, a lot of the European national teams are able to place players in the same clubs, mm. it, it almost gives you that year-round connection with the playing group, which is obviously going to in turn make your national team very strong. Well, indeed. And, and how much do you uh, see that result as... Uh, making a difference for the Matildas. Tony's plan is really to beat them at a World Cup. He wasn't that bothered about whether we beat them on Sunday, was he? Uh, look, uh, I'm sure he's, he's <laughs> highly competitive, as we all are. So um, we always go out there to, to win a match. Um, in, in football, some things uh, that involve a process and, and there's a journey. And we've just embarked on our journey to do well at the Olympics and then win a World Cup. This is just the start. Well, you're in charge of the Young and the Future, Matildas. You would have been delighted to see some of those younger players getting a start on the weekend. Uh, how much do you think uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is actually affecting uh, our ability to bring those players through? Or is it the fact that we have those challenges and, and we're seeing opportunities arise? Yeah, look, I think it's a combination of both. I think there's uh, opportunity in some of the younger players being blooded in um, throughout this tournament uh, but there also be other opportunities we've just seen a successful W League finish yesterday where a lot of young players were involved with high level match minutes mm. and if we look at our performance gap where we're looking to increase match minutes as well as senior national team opportunity for younger players Tony's hitting those milestones. Well you mentioned the W League Emily Gilnick of course the golden boot of the W League made that mad dash over to be part of that camp before she joins Vitcho in Sweden uh, extraordinary performance from her and showed what her height and physicality can do in the front line Absolutely a stellar performance for Gilnick really uh, on show also her ability to play multiple positions given that she started out on the wing for Tony and then was moved to central striker so again, all things that, that work in Em's favour as well as our national team. Yeah, huge relief to see Emily Gilnick put the ball in the back of the net. And I can tell you that that produced a few celebrations on our Zoom watch party. Let's have a look back at the early hours of Sunday morning when some of the hardcore Matildas fans gathered on our Zoom watch party with a bit of banter. It's the Football Australia Zoom watch party. But here we go, the Matildas and Action against Germany in Wiesbaden. Go Australia! It does suck you missing out, but I'm just so excited to watch the girls. I mean, it's the iconic green ball, right? And I actually think it's pretty cute. It's been, well, over a year since we've seen the Matildas in Action, so it's... Oh, Ivy Lewick left it behind, and Germany strike. Nushkin with her first international goal. Afidi Go enjoyed amazing success in the W League. Cut back, fantastic. Oh, oh. They got a muddle there. Consolation coming up for Australia. Come on, Australia. Yeah, skill in. Right. Yeah, period. Goal checker delivers first time. Good looking shape on it too. And oh. it. Great header. And Germany, the reigning. So to all of you, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you. Sleep. Thank you. Yeah, great fun and so much relief to see those goals go in the back of the net. We did not want a whitewash against the world number two side. Of course, we have a big match against world number four side, the Netherlands. This is not going to be an easier clash, is it, Leah? Because, of course, the Netherlands beat Germany not that long ago. No, Steph, <laughs> it, it definitely won't be. Um, they're a quality opponent. They're potent in the attacking third. They've got some very, very good players up front as well as some quality players in midfield. So this certainly will be a challenge for our Matildas, but I revert back to these are the challenges that we need to take on now for success later. Yeah, we saw how talented the Netherlands were in France in 2019, where they performed so well in the last Women's World Cup. Uh, will the knowledge that players like Caitlin Ford have, because she plays at club level with the likes of Vivian Miedema, will that help with the background knowledge or does it make no difference when you gather with the national side? 
Yeah, look, I think the national <laughs> side's a little bit of a different landscape. Um, there's a combination of players in the Netherlands uh, side. Van der Donk's also at Arsenal with with Caitlin as well. So herself and Medema, I dare say, will will be on the same page, having played their club football together and now in the nas national team, which we alluded to before, of being a benefit. Do you expect any changes from Tony Gustafsson because he has such limited time to have these players together and the Olympics are just around the corner. What are you expecting on, on Tuesday? Look, I still think he's going to reward the players who have been doing well in their club environment and wearing your national team jersey and, and pulling on that crest is the ultimate reward for doing well in, in your daily job. So I think he'll stay pretty consistent with his squad, but again, look to toy a little bit and provide further opportunities to those we're, we're trying to blood in as we attempt to build depth and strengthen uh, that cohort of players that'll be available for Olympic and Matilda's selection come the World Cup. Well, the Westville Matildas taking on the Netherlands 2.30 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday morning. Get excited. Yeah, that one's for the early birds. Can't wait for kickoff in this match against the Netherlands. Uh, Leah, it's been so exciting to see our players playing in these clubs around the world. Of course, we've got Kai Simon and Amy Harrison actually playing in the Netherlands. We won't see them on Wednesday morning, but everyone else involved in those clubs in Europe. Have you seen the level of their football just take that next step? Yeah, look, definitely as individuals, we're seeing our players improve. Um, given we haven't had national team activity, it'll take a little while for us to see that transfer into the national team set up um, in terms of the fluidness of our play. But as individuals, you're seeing Sam Kerr, great success at Chelsea, Caitlin's in fine form, as well as some of our other players across the league. Yeah, indeed. Leah Blaney, thank you so much. Thank you for all the work you do in developing our, our future, Matildas. Great to have you with us today and can't wait for this one on Wednesday morning. An exciting time for football in this country. Let's get an exciting update with our CEO, James Johnson. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for watching our official pre-show ahead of tomorrow morning's match against the Netherlands. Last year, we communicated an exciting and bold new vision for football in Australia. Anchoring the growth of our sport in women's football, the strength of our diverse community, promoting inclusivity in Australian football and enhancing the reputation of our great national teams, particularly the Westfield Matildas, as they make their run into the FIFA Women's World Cup, which will be played on home soil in 2023. These are all embedded within our 11 principles and they are key pillars of our 15 year vision for the sport. By now you will likely have seen the exciting news that Football Australia has welcomed two fantastic partners to the team. Last week we announced Rebel, while today with Commonwealth Bank, we announced that Commonwealth Bank will become the largest ever investor in women's football in Australia's history. We are thrilled that Commonwealth Bank and Rebel believe in this vision as much as we do and have chosen to invest in Australian football. I would also like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to Westfield's significant and ongoing support of Football Australia. Enjoy this moment, enjoy this news and enjoy the match. Back to you, Steph. Well, I'm now delighted to be joined by Westville Matildas and Melbourne City defender Jenna McCormick. Jenna, how are you? Good. How are you, Steph? Really well, thank you. Been a couple of weeks since we've seen you in action. Uh, how much did you enjoy the Westfield W League Grand Final? Yeah, loved it. It was a fantastic game and uh, I'm certainly thrilled for the Victory Girls um, to, to come away with the win. It was, it was very entertaining. Sure was. We're here to talk Westville Matildas, though, and uh, that was huge action, of course, on Sunday morning. Uh, you would have watched that game. Uh, perhaps uh, your, your teammate, Tegan Micah, was on our Zoom watch party, and, and she said that she felt a bit of FOMO not being over there. Did you have the same experience? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, it was it was just a joy to be able to watch them back out there again, though, um, and and playing. So, but yeah, certainly certainly had the FOMO as well. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully, this is just the start of uh, of obviously um, more and more action with the Matildas and and leading up, of course, into the Olympics. Five two was a tough result to swallow. But what did you make of the of the match and the performance overall? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was challenging. We saw uh, a strong Germany outfit, even with you know their, uh, even with a, a depleted team, you know, without some of their stars, and obviously with uh, four of them being isolated with COVID uh, protocols. But um, you know, so it just goes to show how much depth they have, um, uh, and how yeah, it was it was just uh, interesting to see, you know, how clinical they are, and and as a team how they work with their full squad as well. Um, and obviously the result the results showed um, there against us. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, it was it was obviously great to see the girls out there playing again and, and obviously being the first game back in a while. Um, team being a bit, uh, you know, a bit scratchy, but, um, you know, we've got a bit of time to, to work together and, and hopefully put the pieces all together to, um, you know, be fit and firing and at 100% and sort of that, back at the best that we've seen, you know, throughout the Olympic qualifiers come come the Olympics. Jenna, we love seeing stars like yourself run around in the W League and, and we know that a lot of you have had experiences in Europe and a, a number coming back to play in our domestic competition here. How did you enjoy your experience in Spain? Yeah, look, Spain was interesting for me. I faced a number of challenges. Um, there uh yeah and you know sort of the main one being the language barrier just um and I, i'm really quite quite the person that doesn't ever you know shy away from a challenge or or anything like that i like to um gain the respect of the, the environment that i walk into and and you know show people that i'm there to work and work hard and um yeah it was just a bit of a questionable environment with with characters that weren't that weren't really uh, helping me be successful. So yes, yeah, so, so a lot of challenges there, and and ultimately, you know, in the end, it was mental health that was the, the biggest thing on my mind, and and wanting to be back playing, you know, playing minutes. So um, coming back into the W League and just consistently playing each week, um, and being back in Australia, surrounded by you know fantastic people, and um, yeah, was was just the right move for me. So um, it doesn't always work out, unfortunately, and. Um, there are a lot of environments that we sort of face that are challenging and, and below, you know, par um, that you don't really hear about. But, um, yeah, we, it made me realise, you know, how great we do have it here in the W League and how important it is to get that full full length season because, um, you know, it can be a really competitive, strong um, league and a great option for Australian players to be able to stay, you know, in in a place where they're getting treated you know, well, and they don't have to sort of um, take a hit uh, mentally to be able to continuously play and get better each week. So that's really the priority, um, you know, over the next couple of years, as it has been for the last few years as well. Yeah, 100% mental health is that number one priority. And I think a lot of people underestimate how hard it actually is to move across the world uh, to chase football minutes in different countries. Uh, for you coming back to the W League, it does mean that along with your, your domestic league teammates, uh, you weren't in contention for these two particular matches with the Westfield Matildas. What's the communication been like? What do you, you know about your inclusion and being in the frame ahead of the Olympics in Tokyo? Yeah, it was quite disappointing um, finding out that the Australian best players would be ineligible. I mean, obviously, we've got some great talent here um, and players who've played really well throughout the W League that probably deserve a spot, um, at, you know, in the camp and, and a chance to play. Um, but, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's it, well, you know, for COVID protocol reasons and stuff like that, um, it wasn't allowed. But, yeah, look, the, the communication has been um, obviously priority with, the girls who are there training and playing, um, you know, with the, there from the coaches and stuff. But um, it was great to have uh, an inclusion in the opening meeting of the, of the camp. And, um, you know, we got to zoom in a few players and, and the staff from Australia that have missed out to go. Got to zoom in, just touch base. Um, you know, it's it, so it was it's good to have a little bit of conversation um, whilst they are over there. Um, but, yeah, obviously the priority is to get, 
the girls who were there um, ready for the games. So um, hopefully, you know, once the conclusion of this camp has um, come, we'll be able to be a little bit more involved again and and back in the open lines and and look towards the next the next uh, gathering of the team. Yeah, for sure. It's it's obviously the intention that when global borders permit that everyone will be uh, back in the fold and be able to meet face to face uh, in that Westfield Matildas camp. At the moment, though, we find you in Adelaide. Is that correct? Being announced as a host city for the World Cup. How exciting is that? Oh, yeah. So thrilled for Adelaide to, um, to be able to host some games here for the World Cup. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm back just visiting family and, and friends during the rounds whilst I'm still in Australia. Not not really knowing what, what's going to happen with me next. So um, just thought, yeah, I'd pop home whilst I whilst I have the opportunity um, and then back to Melbourne, get back into training and, and yeah, um, you know, hopefully head off somewhere after then. But, um, yeah, so happy to, to see Adelaide get some games. I know we've, we had the biggest record um, at, the, at the Adelaide United game during the season, as we saw. So the community support's big and, um, and it's, it's just going to be great to see um, Hind Marsh Stadium all, all full, um, you know, when we have uh, the Matildas. Well, hopefully the Matildas get to play there, but um, some of the best players in the world will be playing there in 2023. Well, first up, of course, the green and gold will be in Tokyo for the Olympics. Now, assume that between your family time, your attention is to be on the pitch for them in Tokyo. Is that right? Yeah, so look, of course, that's been my um, goal and focus since I um, started to solely focus on um, football, and um, and that doesn't change even with the with the delayed with the delayed tournament and you know everything that's going on. So yeah, just just each day, just trying to chip away, get that one day better, and and hopefully give myself every opportunity of selection in a few months' time. Jenna McCormick, it's been great to chat to you. Thank you so much for your time, and we wish you all the very best, and look forward to seeing you back in the green and gold. Thanks, Steph. Well, thanks to Leah and Jenna for sharing their insights today. Thank you for joining us and get excited about this match where the Westfield Matildas will take on the Netherlands on Tuesday morning, 2.30 a.m. Eastern. You can watch it on ABC, Fox Sports, KO or My Football Live app. Get behind the Westfield Matildas on the road to 2023.